Uh, hello, hello guys. Uh, today we are going to be developing a crude application using GoLang and React.js. So our uh, GoLang will be for the back end and React.js will be for the front end. So what I mean by crude application is it should be able to create, read, update, and delete. All right, so let's try to experiment that with this sample so the first thing is create right so i have some of these data I have here okay so let's let's just copy from here okay uh, let's let's make our own john do uh, jane do uh, jane uh, uh, gmail that's one let's leave data or we can just skip one okay fine um, Boston, Nile State. I see. So that is the profile we just created now. Okay, so <laughs> we can also delete. Is that? You can see. So that's update. You update it. And you can also view the profile. You can also delete the profile. Okay, so. Another thing you notice here is the pagination. You can move from one page to another so that you don't have to you know, load all the information in a single page. You can you know, paginate them. So that means your back end, we have this uh, facility that you know, gives you the opportunity to paginate the, 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 the data on the front end. So uh, to get started, we are going to start with the back end. So that, that means we have to develop the back end using GoLang, all right? So these are things we have to notice. We have different method, request methods that we are going to need, all right, for the users. So the first one is get. So this get slash, uh, slash user, user is going to, you know, list the users, right? The post is going to, you know, we are going to submit a new user data to that endpoint and the patch. The patch will update a specific user. That's why you have the, the ID, All right? You have to supply the ID and for the delete to the same route, but is delete. The, uh, the method is delete and you have to supply the ID. And if you want to get a single user, just like we did here, when you view a profile, you are trying to get a single user, All right? So that's what the, that endpoint does. So since we are done talking about that, so let's get started with our Golang project. Okay, so start a new Golang project. <coughs> we have to create a new directory. A directory. Oh. And, um, Golang React JS. I already this guy is okay. So I will try to open that in our visual studio code. So this is an empty empty directory. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to need is our main go. Our main go. So main does go. So we specify the package. Our main. Fine. So we are going to uh, initialize the go module by running go mode init. So specify the part it up let com slash quotagon slash uh crude minimum of our project will land uh yeah, yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you see? So a new file has been created here with the module that we specify. So the first <coughs> the first package we are going to install now is the fiber because we are going to use this fiber to make other requests like the, the request that I mentioned just now. So this uh <coughs> this fiber will allow us to make this this request okay so let's try to install that so using go get um 
github dot com slash go fiber slash fiber slash version two nice so that that's installed okay so now um we're going to work on the let's start with the main all right so normally you know you are going to have the main function bank main all right so we have a new fiber uh, a new fiber object all right okay so import let's import fiber uh, it all let me just copy it from here second okay so uh, app the fiber dot new okay so we've created a new fiber object and that's the uh, the app okay so let's post with that first and let's let's work on the <coughs> let's work on the repository so what 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 how i how we are going to do this is uh like it's going to be similar to mvc framework like we are we're going to have model we're going to have views we're going to have controllers all right so the the model is about the database connection with the database uh the view will be like the front end part and the controller will be handling uh will be handling the request on the back end all right so let's create a new folder we call it repo z3 repository so in that in that folder we're going to create another we are going to create a file called the repository dot go okay so <clears throat> normally that would be what package repository right so import gone so we are going to need gone right so let's let's get that go get gone dot io slash gone Okay, so that is we've installed that. Okay, so gone dot io slash gone. So the function of that gone is to establish EPSOS establish a uh, connection with the database. So we have like this connection with it, we can uh, make requests to it and do anything you, you want. So <clears throat> type repository. So we are trying to create a new struct. Struct. Okay, so <clears throat> we have db gone db. So we are used we are going to be using this repository in our whole project. So that's why we have that in a separate file. So <clears throat> let's let's try to define the route. Okay. So route go. Okay, so <clears throat> package repository again, and we are going to import fiber github slash go fiber slash fiber slash version two. So I doing version two okay so <clears throat> create a new function function uh, repo repository set up routes so that we are set fiber
fiber up. Okay, so uh, github.com, sorry. Okay, <laughs> now you are good. So uh, let's let's just hold on on that for now. All right. Okay, so uh, let's. Okay, so um, let's create another file, another folder. Okay, so we call that Bootstrap outside the, in the root directory. So Bootstrap. Okay. So <clears throat> that Bootstrap, what it's going to do is just going to you know, establish connection with database by calling the initialize app. So that will do the connection and then it will run a migration. What run a migration means we have a predefined uh, migration, right? So running, when I say predefined migration, like the specification for creating uh, the database table, right? Like the user table, we are going to have the name, email, uh, city and everything. So we are going to specify those things. And then once we run the migration, is going to create those table and execute those command. So that's what this bootstrap is going to do. But since I said we are going to run a migration, that means we are going to create a migration, all right? So let's do that. So we are going to create a new folder, uh, call it database, database. Uh, let's have a migration, migration folder. migrations migration so we call it we create a new file inside the migration folder we call it create users table you can call it anything you want it's just like i just wanted to do like the, the level migration so package so make sure you specify the, uh, the package migration so <clears throat> imports we are going to import we're going to need time and then we are going to need gone from dot io slash gone okay so the first thing we are going to do here is create a struct so type user the user struct So specify everything, the, the colon that we need. Okay, so ID, we're going to need ID, assigned integers. So um, so we have back tick there, back tick, make sure, make sure it's back tick. And we have, um, that will be the primary key and to be auto increment auto increment all right so <clears throat> in json um, in json format now the id so that's the first one And then we have name. Uh, that will be string. Uh, <clears throat> string. And a tick. JSON. JSON format. That will be name. Okay, so let me just copy and paste all this. Okay, so we have email. Email. We have date. We have the date for the type will be time dot time without this. Okay, so um, the city we have city that be string to and that will be city in the JSON. A country, country and country. 
sorry this spelling is wrong or sign integers <laughs> okay uh, I wrote unit okay so we are going to run the migration so a new function we call it migrate user users so to accept db and become db as it can db from com okay so to return error to actually error and so create a new function and we're going to create a new variable so db dot auto migrate so that we accept the user user uh, then return error perfect so this error you know this is a function this error is going to be returned to here so that's why you mentioned that okay so the next thing we are going to need we are going to need a model so inside the database folder not migration folder the database folder so we need we are going to need models okay so let's just call it user group that that will be the user model you understand the concept of, of model that means like you have multiple user so a model is just like a template for all the users all right so <clears throat> package models so create a new struct type user struct so we have the same almost the same thing but it's just is a is a, a model so we're going to specify what each user is going to look like what the properties they're going to have right so <clears throat> we have json the the name uh, validate required so it be like a requirement for storing that user into the database all right so um minimum it shouldn't be less than three and it shouldn't be more it shouldn't be more than 40. all right just like a specification for things so yeah. we have email so the json will be email and it will be required and that's to verify that this value is email the value that is being supplied to it all right so minimum of six and maximum of let's leave it as 40 or let's say 32. okay so <clears throat> we're going to have date date uh it's going to be date validate and required or oh, we don't need all this it's just Forget about that. And let me copy this. City. City validate required minimum of three, maximum of 40. And country. 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 Okay, validate required minimum of three, maximum. And we are done with the model. So the next one we are going to talk about is uh, <clears throat> the storage. So this is the, the real deal that will allow us to you know connect that actually connect with the database, establish the connection, right? So we call it storage. The storage folder inside the database, inside the database folder, right? So uh, we are going to be using Postgres uh, database. So let's call it Postgres. Dot go. You can use any database you want, but for this tutorial, we're going to be using Google, uh, Postgres. So if you want me to <laughs> use another database or make a tutorial on connecting, it, establishing connection with another database, you can mention that in the comment, right? So <clears throat> package storage. Okay, so <clears throat> import, I'm going to need some stuff. 
I'm going to need plenty to print. To need a plenty to print. Right. I'll do other stuff. I'm going to need one that I will slash driver. So Postgre is just one of the drivers in GUM. I'm pretty sure there is MySQL, MongoDB and everything, so I haven't really confirmed that, but I'm sure they are there. Okay, so <clears throat> GUM. So type config struct. So <clears throat> host, that is train. So just like some requirement to establish, you know, we are going to have ports, the user, password, and the database name, all right? So we specify the port. Sorry. Port. Specify the password. Specify the user. Specify the database name. TV name, and the last one, the SSL mode. Mode. Okay, so <clears throat> now this is the real deal function that does the connection. Okay, new connection. So config is going to accept the config. So it's going to return gum db type error. <laughs> okay, so the error will be in form of gum db. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what we need. I need a comma. Okay, so <clears throat> um, the the same. So FMT. Uh, S print S print F. Okay, so we have host just like normal connection stuff. So for us to we don't want to supply everything here, so we just have like some kind of format. Just that's why we needed the yes the, uh, the FMT. So we have the uh, port, I mean port. We have the user. Let's say password. DB name. And SSL. SSL mode. So then we need to supply all those things because we are going to replace and everything we supply will be replaced this uh S that we have here. Because, so that's how the that uh, FMT works, the S point uh, F. So config host. You know we supplied config here, so that config will be available. So this one is just like a a specification for it but we are going to have that config and then we are going to supply it here so I, i'm here to do that so let's just follow what i'm doing so config uh port i'm writing config. config user and oh we have config password we have config user uh sorry we've done that already db name and we have config ssl mode so we've successfully supplied all those things here so make sure the arrangement tallies with what you have here all right okay so <clears throat> that is that so let's move on to checking the error there is an error connect uh, 
you establish the connection and check for errors okay so check for errors so gone dot open we have the postgres from postgres from this okay so <clears throat> open the dsn supply this dsn and they say I can dot config perfect okay so we are going to check for the error if error is not new that is if there is an error new i'm ah, sorry if there's no error sorry. <laughs> if there's no error it's not new <laughs> okay so db not new so done db new so <clears throat> We are done with that except we need to install this i was here could not import provide package okay so we have to install that package okay so run go get like that perfect just perfect so that we are done with the database folder we are done with the database Okay, so let's go back to our, our bootstrap. So the bootstrap folder, we're going to have app. The file named app.go. Okay, so the package will be bootstrap. So import, I'm going to need a lot of things here. All right, so we're going to need log. I'm going to need OS. Going to need our migration. The migration we created earlier, the database folder. So specify the path github.com slash code tagon. You remember the path we specified why we are initializing the uh, Go module. So you have to specify that code go line react js slash database database now we are talking about this database now now we are inside the repo so inside the uh, directory okay so migration let's see we have do not import uh we wait uh, the go module is what? Ah, is underscore. <laughs> okay, is underscore. Not. So let's see. Imported but not used. So that that is okay. We have we haven't used it yet. We're going to need the storage. What is wrong? Storage. And we are going to need the repository folder. We have repository directory. So it's not inside the database, so it's outside. So repository. Make sure pay attention to that, please. Repository imported but not used. Okay, so we are good. Then we are going to need fiber github.com slash go fiber slash fiber slash version two and we're going to need the fiber middleware okay so github.com slash go fiber slash version two slash middleware so we're going to need the course and we're going to need uh is that found Imported but not used. 
could not import okay so <laughs> uh github dot com oh sorry fiber please pay attention to that so dot <clears throat> com slash joe oh and go dot tech go dot n that will be used for our environment variable okay so we are still going to need that but we can find this okay this is available imported but no use but this is not installed so we are going to install it using good uh go get added okay so We haven't used it to import it, but not used. So we import everything we need. Okay, so let's create our function. That will be like will be like initialize the app. Once we run the app, this is the first function that will be called from our main group. You see, we haven't done that yet, but that is the first function that we call. We're going to call. So let's function and initialize app. Okay, so is going to accept app from the main go this app that we have here that we haven't used so that app will be you know, the type the fiber dot app okay so let's call we are not accepting anything so uh, it's going to look up for the environment variable okay so OS dot lookup environment lookup for environment variable. Well, before we do that, I think we should just use our environment. The reason why we are going to need this one is maybe you are in, you are trying to deploy to production, all right? So it's going to look up from the you know, pro, your production server. Like if you deploy to an Elastic. Uh, beanstalk now we are going to have the environment variable all right so it's going to look up for it if it exists and anything but we are going to need to to load our environment variable all right so let's load our environment variable let's just load it this means that this means that we are going to have a file name dot f now our root directory, right? So go dot n dot load. So that means we are going to need a file dot n. That's in quotes. Okay. So <clears throat> if there is error, like uh, the file is not found or something else went wrong. Okay. So <clears throat> to log the issue, it's our Log the error, else we are free to proceed. So from that, you can get our config. You can create a new config variable that we are going to supply into our new connection that we did earlier. All right, the new connection that we did in the database thing. Okay, so so that config is going to come from. <laughs> Storage, now we have storage database storage. This post, all right. So, we are going to supply that config here, okay? So, storage dot config. So, we're going to supply all these things. Um, <clears throat> OS get environment db host db host nice so we're going to have like six properties there we have port why am i writing post port wait sorry sorry let me just <laughs> port and port Okay, and password. We're going to have the password 
So in your environment variable, that will be db password. We're going to have the user. So user. That will be db user. DB user and the SSL mode. SSL mode. This will be DB SSL mode. And the DB name. And that will be what? DB name. Perfect. So <clears throat> uh, let's just go ahead and call the new connection that we add here new connection this okay so <laughs> error if there is any error okay so storage strong experience new connection all right so we're going to supply the config that's just pretty straightforward supply the config here it returns the error just like input output right <laughs> okay so the error if there is error if there is no error it's not equals to new error is not equals to new so that means if there is error so data would not load the database database okay so now the next thing i'm going to do is run the migration okay so that's the error attended to the error but now we're going to run the the, the migration now mm, oh. error if there is any error, any error on that, so we call migration. The migration from our migration uh, DT, uh, DB folder. So migrate. You know we have a function there named migrate user. So that we undo that. So if the error is not equal to name, that is if there is an error. Okay. If there is an error, why? migrating the user so that we could not not migrate db and we are going to call a new repository now we have a repository here this repository so we are going to store this db inside that repository okay so that's what we are doing here. okay so repository repository db db right. that's going to be the corner okay so app the app from here from fiber okay now we are now using the fiber now so app is going to use course the course from where from the fiber middleware but new course config allow credentials credentials to be true okay so we're going to need a repo this repo is going to call setup route from where from here okay are you following so it's going to accept app as we can see here from the route it's going to accept our app yeah uh sorry it's going to accept the app and app is going to listen just like node.js it's going to listen to a particular port so let's use 8081 port 8081 okay so <laughs> i think we are done yeah we are done with the bootstrap bootstrap so we are close that okay so <clears throat> we're done with the create user user okay so <clears throat> uh the next thing now is that is to go back to our main that's the main guy 
the main the main dot go so and uh, we are going to need bootstrap right from where this bootstrap okay so to save us a lot of time typing so let's just copy this you can type you have to type too all right i just i'm just doing that so that we can save time and you can do something important with that time okay but it's better if you type them so that it can tap to your module memory okay so bootstrap Bootstrap. Is that spelling correct? Yeah, import paper no use. It's correct. <laughs> so we need the repository. Repository import paper no used. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are just going to have a new structure, but we are going to use the repository that we already have so that it can be available in the whole app. Repository dot repository okay and the last one bootstrap initialize app app so <laughs> that is that on main function we are not doing anything here again okay so now in our app dot go notice we have dot m uh file our environment variable so that means we have to create a file environment variable dot env so let's try to work on that the environment variable so like we notice there we have different values there db host db port db password ssl mode and db name just like that so the host is localhost depends on your host so that the reason why we're having these environment variables is like you can differentiate between the the uh, development environment and the uh, production environment and you can try to interchange between them okay so <clears throat> five for the port so uh before i do this before i do this normally the port in first grade the default one is five four uh three two Okay, but before I do all this configuration, I'd like to talk about the Postgres database, Postgres database. Okay, so what I'm using is PG Admin, PG Admin 4. If you are watching, I don't know the time you are watching, the version of your own, but I'm using PG Admin. Okay, so you can download yours and you can use it to manage Postgres database. Okay, so we are going to create a new data, new server, call it go uh, ssl turn it to be disabled see like i said default is 5432 so the host is local host all right and the password let's just leave it empty okay uh, Think we are good. Rogue Postgres does not exist. Uh, the user, okay. So my user is Mark. That's my name. Okay. Okay. The username. I mean the username on the on the database. The user I set up. You have to set up a user. All right. So that's not what we are focusing on here, but that's what we are going to do. Okay, so <clears throat> I see all that here and you can see the tables here okay so <clears throat> so you remember the password is empty and the user is mac and the ssl mode is disabled like i hit disabled I'm spelling disabled disabled so we go through the server the name
five to the power. Okay, so <clears throat> let's try to run and see what we have. Go run main dot go. So that is on port eight thousand and eighty one. So why is the allow not clicking? Okay, so let me just I think there is some error going down there, but your allow should work. Okay, <laughs> so and that means you are fully everything is working perfectly. So let's start working on our endpoint. So our endpoint, you know, I said it's kind of like an MVC, all right. So we have a route that handles the the, the, the the endpoint. So you specify maybe you want to call the slash user users endpoint. So we specify that in the route, and then the you specify the controller that handles the route. Okay, so that's a controller with like a function. Okay, so that function is going to handle the route, and using fiber is going to give you a response. Okay, so that's how it's going to go. That means we are going to need a route file we already have here and a controller file okay so inside our repository it's better to have them in the same file like this so that the repository can um, be available in the controller file controller.go okay so package repository so we are good to go now since we are connected with our database you should be you should be able to see the users the users table yeah the users table and view rules okay so i think this is the old one okay so let's Okay, so <clears throat> let's start with getting the users. Okay, we want to see the list of users, all right? So if you are unable to run this, you have to check the code again where you've made a mistake. You shouldn't have any errors here in this stage now. You shouldn't have any error, all right? So if you have any error, you should probably try to check the video again. Maybe you missed something. See, there's no error in my code now. Okay, so we have the controller, we have the route. But the first right I need now is I want to see the list of the list of users, right? So since we have the app here, so that means you can easily use our app from Fiber. So our API. But what I want to do now is that I want to group them into a single, like I can have slash API slash users. All right, if I want to submit to slash API slash user, can you see, can, if I want to submit to new data, still, still the same route, but you can see this, uh, some, there's something common between them, which is what, API, all right? So that's why we're going to group them into a, you know, API group, all right? So we have API, and if our app group, so that will be slash API, so they are in the same group, all right or the endpoint i will be calling would be slash api maybe if you have like slash version 2 or version 1 you can just add that a easy all right but you just want slash api okay so api dot get the first one we want to talk about is get okay so get users repo dot get users <laughs> get users so that's our function the get user should be our, control, uh, our function from the controller file all right so let's create that function now okay 
uh, controller okay now we need different things but just to get we need a lot of things okay so let's say we, we specify the the package all right but let's create a function and uh, so that function will be related to this repository all right that's the function of that get user so it means this function will be you no know, it's from this repository all right you can it's related to it to each other so that's what we did there ctx error so but you notice something that we uh we uh we haven't import fiber okay so let me just you know what let me just import everything we need let me import everything we need that one so that we won't be importing one by one okay first we need net it's slash http for the http response and uh, nope uh i want that long name uh -huh. so you know what that means that's the path that was specified in the when we were initializing the go mode so what, what we are doing there is that if you are pointing to a directory in your project you have to specify that part first for that project so database you can see you have that database now it's like a route a directory on the server okay so just to tidy everything up you know migrations is that available is that correct okay imported or used so we're going to need models too models that we have here okay and i want to name go fiber go github.com slash go fiber slash fiber slash version 2 okay so see the fiber error is gone and we're going to need paginate you know i talk about paginate in our sample project the sample i showed you okay so i'm going to need that paginate package by mockid so it's just going to paginate all the uh, the response for us paginate we don't have that we haven't installed that and we're going to need validator we want to validate the response uh, the, the the request you know if you are submitting the data you have to know if what the user is submitting is correct or not just to confirm everything is going all right all right so go play ground ground my i still need to be really validator dot version nine okay so let's stop this and this this one is still pumping What's going on? Let me just hide that. <laughs> okay, so uh we're going to let's be sure this is correct, the spelling is correct. Okay, so let's let's install them. Go get page net. Yeah, so it says and the validator, we are going to install that too. Go get validator okay so and okay, so let's continue with our get requests I get users so we are going to connect the database DB equals to r dot DB model oh this model this r is from this r that we supplied here 
All right. So db dot model migration dot users. That's from our migration file. Did there and paginate. We have to paginate the the response. You know, the response is the list of users, right? But we want to paginate them. Like, how many do we want per page and the current page and all that? Okay, so paginate dot config default size. You can adjust the default size here. So default is twenty. We want twenty and custom parameter enabled you want to supply custom parameters like in this page uh, in this page uh, package you can filter the the response as you want if there are many features on it right, that you can do even just from the, the part the endpoint is very it's very interesting okay so PG with with capital capital letter W models uh, model that's from this model the model that we are request the contest dot request and we are going to get response response and migrate migration dot users so that user struct is from the uh, migration file so not that so the contest status status uh, http status ok dot json and fiber dot map oh, let's go another suggestion okay so the map is going to map in this format data equals to page very nice very nice return yeah return new so let's paste that can we paste that yeah you can you can paste that you can. let me comment this out okay so let's test that wrong uh, go wrong me go the allow button is not working it used to work maybe because i'm recording so i believe it has is working so but 80 81 so we are going to use what a postman okay so our part is what one seven zero let's just copy it or we can copy from here please don't but it's a get to get request as you can see here in our route get or slash api slash users so slash api slash users can you see that <laughs> so we are good just perfect so we can see the page needs the page is zero size is 20 20 per page mass uh, maximum page uh total page and that and that but we can see the data the items in it so we can easily uh look through them and display them to the user so i think we are, we are actually done with the get request okay so let's work with other requests but let me, to save time let's just we don't have time to be testing them one by one so let's just work on them and do the request at once so post users repo dot what 
create user so you know what that means you're going to need a function in the in the uh, controller okay so the update you need the update just like i showed earlier here right same thing just like that all right so um users slash then you supply the id okay so repo dot i want to make sure the spellings are correct updates update user okay so <clears throat> the next one is delete you just copy and paste but this one is what delete you want to delete a specific user that would be slash user slash id supply the id and the function to be what delete user so the last one is get you want to get a single user so slash id slash get user by id get user by id so we supply the id and now you know what to do i'm going to come back to this uh, to the controller and make sure those functions are available okay so Let's, let's start with get user starts with the next one okay so uh, <clears throat> let's start with our uh, post um, create user okay so we want to create a new user they are always the same all this uh, <clears throat> what's it called the function the, the functions we have here are almost the same all right they're going to need it's going to be referenced with repository and uh you are going to have the function name it's going to accept the fiber compest and it's going to return error all right so it's just the same so create user nice so user equals to models dot user okay so error Check for context that body parser body parser and supply that user. Okay, so if error means that it's not new. Okay, so uh <coughs> Contest. This contest is just to send response to user. It's just like convey. It's like a transport for the response. So you have to specify the, the response. Uh, <clears throat> the response status unprocessed. Unprocessable entity. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to this outside. Then JSON, JSON, try to compare to have at a uh, percent fiber map. Okay, so you turn the response. Sorry, map message return a message request field all right okay so yeah make sure pay attention to the indentation on the error Okay, see we still have to return something that's why we have red here okay so error because you can have if not you can have else here and we haven't specified the else yet okay, so else is when we actually do something but now we want to validate we want to validate it validate the 
uh, the request. What I mean by request, data we sent from the request. The data, the data that is part of the request, all right? So we create a new struct here. Funk validate struct. Now we accept uh, the user and the type is models user. Okay, so and we are going to have error response. <laughs> The error response is just it's just a struct to format the response, right? It's no big deal. Response. So let's create that, that struct, that error response struct type. Error response struct. So field. Let's define the field. 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 String. Tag, string, and value. Also, string. Okay, so so <clears throat> we have the error. The error response just like defining a variable all right I have a variable so error validate dot struct user the user that was supplied here okay so if Error is not equals to name. So for kind of trying to look through it, all right. So error uh, range error uh, dot validator validator errors All right so they are trying to do through that okay so if you don't know how that works you should try to check a tutorial on that or you can make a request for it meant error response so it's going to get each each errors and assign to this you get <laughs> to this struct to each field so you get the, the idea so fail feed we have, we have fail feed is go to error dot struct namespace namespace struct sign so correct it's a little bit mouthful element dot tag you see what I'm doing there? I'm assigning those, I'm assigning value to each field. Error uh, field in that struct. Okay, so elements dot value equals to error dot param. Okay, so <clears throat> errors, errors. That's the basic word. We are going to do a paint as easy as pie. You see, we are looking and we are trying to append the errors to it so that it can have a single, single list or something. So return errors. That will return the errors that we have. So we are done with the validate stroke. So let's go back to our our quit user. So. <clears throat> Create user, so we have errors. Check for errors. Validate structs. So that will validate the user that we accept from the body parser. All right. To see if everything is good, what the user supplied is actually okay. All right. Like validating for emails, the name, and so on and so forth. 
right? So validation dropped and checking if it is empty, if it is supplied, if the field is empty or not. So does a lot of things. So we turn. So if there is an error, if there is an error, one moment. Sorry. So if there is an error, you should return context. Just return the status context dot status context status fiber dot status bad request. JSON errors so that is going to format the errors that we have okay so <clears throat> if error equals to so we have a new error again now this is what does the real thing by inserting the new data into the we validated it and we are all good then we can insert the data into the database so from our repository we have the data the database is available so we call that and create and user and user so error. so we check for error it's not new okay so if there, if there is an error there while inserting into the user to the user table it should return an error message on text the status the status and http dot status bad request bad request json fiber fiber map okay so <clears throat> status and error error and the message is equal to couldn't create user user and the data is what error okay so that is that for creating a user and normally if there is no error okay contest so that means we are all good to go status everything is okay okay so that is http will be what if everything is okay that will be 200 all right status okay or you can just write 200 there so we're just trying to follow the specification there okay so <clears throat> it's going to give a response and i'm going to map it fiber dot map and the message will be user has been added And data, the data will what will turn the user so that we can actually see the newly added user. Okay, so so then we return new, return nothing. Oh, good. Something is strong here. Okay. I 
when you declare the name same something is wrong with our package that we that we import here so it's go go pkg dot in slash go playground slash validator validator slash fashion line so the validate should be available so what's going on okay so validate we didn't get the validate variable first to validator dot name just perfect so we still have three functions to go should we paste that one first well it's just i think everything is good but we test everything together so let's let's continue then with the next one update user like i said it's the same thing they're going to have the, the repository the contest and everything so so this one will be update update uh, <clears throat> update user so we're going to have the user model we're going to have body parser we're going to have um, <clears throat> The error just like create user, we are going to validate the struct, check for the struct. So uh, let's just copy all this. It's the same thing. The create user, so that will save us a lot of time. Okay, so <clears throat> you can do that too, but I will recommend you type it <laughs> so it can stick with your module member. I don't want to waste your time. That's why I'm doing that. Okay, so. <clears throat> DB, we still have the front end to develop, so that's going to cost a lot of time. So, ID uh, contest parent. So, why why are we doing this? Okay, we are trying to get the ID supplied from the parameter you get from the route. So, we can that ID we are available here. So, we check if the ID is is not empty okay so if id you check if the id is not empty by checking if id is empty you get the idea okay so context status http let's use http bad request the request is bad not good, not good. Jason and <clears throat> no. and fiber dot map. Okay, so let's have the map there. The response. So we have the message and the message itself. ID cannot be empty. Okay, so that we undo that and return new. So if it's not empty, then we can proceed. So that we, first we are going to do what we are going to check for the ID, check for the user using that ID, and then check for the user with that ID, and then update. The, the, the request the request data with that user's information so that's how it's going to go okay so so if db model user okay id equals to okay so the ID update to update the the user. So we check if the row affected is equal to zero. Then something is wrong. That means we didn't find the ID. It's not a dot. The comma. Okay, so that means we didn't find that user. The user with that ID. So could not we're going to return a response that you are unable to get a 
could not not get user profile or account or anything and then we are going to return the response the main one okay but well, that one will be sources that means everything is fine okay so that will be status what status okay okay so <clears throat> sources sources all right then. So says uh, status sources or maybe status true or false or depends on what you are trying to do or still anything it's the same thing because we are successfully we have successfully uh, update that user's profile easy peasy updated user successfully updated get the idea so do you have any error no we are good to go so the next one is what delete user i want to delete a user so i don't want us to be testing one by one so that we can actually save time right so we can test everything all together just be sure i'm sure the the code is going to work <laughs> okay so <laughs> delete delete user so we're going to need the param all right like we supply the param here okay the parameter the, the id and we are going to get the user model the user model but that is not from the user model actually it's from the migration so it's like a user struct so let's call it user model migration that's kind of different please pay attention to that All right it's just a it's a struct from the migration file database migration you can see it's just a struct so so that's all we need not the model see it's different from this one so pay attention to that okay so we just needed to you know, format the, the database so we get the response we try to get the parameter id so if there is an error it's going to show us an error and if there isn't an error we are going to delete call it make the delete uh, request so r dot db dot delete the user model then we supply the id so if there is an error if error dot error is not equals to new no, context status http dot status bad request dot json map and we're going to get the response uh we're going to map it sorry and message could not delete could <laughs> could not delete okay so return error dot error what okay so now we are going to return the normal uh, message that means everything is good and we are good to go okay status okay they are successfully deleted get the idea so and the last one i'm not sure the uh, <clears throat> you guys are hearing me clearly because the noise the background noise but let's try to finish the the final function and maybe we can test 
the error the noise is still going on we won't be able to test okay so there's too much noise around there so you have the same function again okay so <clears throat> get the for this function you do what it's going to get a user by id okay so we have the parameters and user model just like we have a so let's do that we have the migration we have the user model and we're going to do what error equals to r dot db dot where id equals to we want to find a particular user using the user id to make sure that user actually exists so we pick the first one the first user using the user model that we have here as the template and return error if there's an error okay so we are going to check if there is an error so to save us time let's just copy this you shouldn't i will advise to not copy it <laughs> you know, i'm doing it yes but don't 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 copy it because you won't get used to it except if you already if you are okay with copying that's absolutely absolutely fine but i wouldn't advise it so i just want to save us time that's what i'm doing okay so <clears throat> Context is bad request and fiber and main. So could not get the user. Could not get the user. And since we have already returned error here, so we don't need to pick the error again. So and if everything is okay, we have the success message. The success responds again. What is this? No, no, no. We already have dot error here. So <clears throat> the status everything is okay. Our user ID fetch, user profile. Okay, let's say user user profile fetched successfully. That is the message. And I think we are good there. You see, the error in the route is okay, it's gone, everything is gone, and so let's I'm not sure the the background noise is disturbing so let's i'm going to pause here i'm going to test the one i've recorded to see maybe the we can proceed with this this background noise okay so give me some moments <laughs> 